Where do you have to be? Where are you going now? Are you uh, well, I'm doing the tape pot show, but that's fine. There's no uh, okay, cool. pop in at the end. So. Let's just stand here then. Uh, try and sort of get in the light. Yeah, I'll be all right. Just filming now. Uh, are you all right to this? Be on a documentary? Yeah, I'm very happy to. And uh, YouTube as well, is that all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. uh, so yes, here we are outside the pear tree. Yeah. Um, what do you want to know? What do I want to know? Yes. Uh, why, are we, why are we doing this? Because I'm doing a documentary about the documentary and it's informative in that it's sort of exploring the limits of what documentary is and how it's sort of, how the, the, the reality of the documentary is very much constructed. We don't see that construction. So it becomes a process of hiding the truth behind. So like when you, when you don't see the, the meeting of people, you don't see, you know, but if I was asking the questions, I'd be leading the conversation and leading where things went. I want I want you to be leading where things go, but within this sphere, roughly, genuinely, in the sphere of what this documentary is about. But we can talk about literally anything you want. Uh, so we're engaged in a kind of Brechtian yes. alienation. Type. We're breaking the fourth wall. Some some Someone, real life happening. There. That was genuinely real. <laughs> you know. A self camera, man. off camera. But yeah. Uh, so yeah. What do you, what do you want to know? What, what what interests you about this project? Or, uh, or if you want to, we well, just talk about. I, well, I tell you, I'm quite interested in the in the notion that um, yeah, you were saying. So where where does our generation find meaning? Mm. I suppose. Uh, You're a prostitute. I'm not a prostitute, oh, thank but I can for be that. for you. I was just I was just <laughs> gonna like, I was gonna say, man. We're filming a documentary yeah. on prostitutes. Yeah, here he is. <laughs> oh, wicked man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my life as a prostitute and a part-time <laughs> comedian. <laughs> there you are. How you doing? What's happening? Yeah, I'm promoting someone, man. Yeah, because I've got some shit going on. Fuck you. No, I just, I just shouted shit to people. Um, yeah, so you'd like to come to my show. It's 10 o'clock. It's not my show, actually. It's someone else's. Darius is, man. He's awesome. This guy's going to be a star. Yeah, he's going to be a star. Yeah. Yeah, so 10 o'clock at the Meadows Bar. Um, actually, it's the last night, so whoever sees this, it's not going to happen, obviously. <laughs> if you go to Menace Bar, it'll just be like people drinking, drink, drinking, drunking, drunk. drunken, drunk. They're all coming. See, look, she's coming, the little kid. Oh, God, let's <laughs> come. That's how good I am. I get kids to come. The shows. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. Anyway, yeah, so it's been a long, uh, long three weeks, and I've really enjoyed it. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Why well, are you? And, uh, yeah, it's crazy walking <laughs> into a camera and shit. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, hopefully people pour out of the fucking Three Sisters and go to the men's bar. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. That's the last Please day. Shout. People are broken. Broken, yeah, I know, broken. yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Are you still doing the prostitution thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's still right. filming. Oh, cool. Uh, excellent. Yeah. This is real life. Awesome. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. Uh, I bet, I bet, I'm just going <laughs> to go and see if anyone. Ah, oh, look, they're leaving. Yeah, look, they're, 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 there they're they go. See, they've got a card. They're definitely no, coming. Yeah, they're coming. They're coming. Yeah. Yes! That's what I see. Look, if I get two, it's better than ten. <laughs> Which way is it? No, you're coming with me, man. <laughs> Roll dicks! Cheers, guys. Right. See, see you later. Yeah. Uh, so well, wait, wait. That Meaning. Was, that, was the, that was the fringe right there. <laughs> that was the fringe right there. Uh, yeah, no, quite, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, constructing meaning in, a, I don't know, the early 21st century mm. post neoliberalist environment. So, what I think is interesting about that, at the risk of sounding pretentious, it's not this. I am pretentious. It's a documentary about fuck all, so ah, you've got is, uh, very little chance of something actually pretentious about it. Well, that's good. Yeah, so I feel like I've spent the month trying to, I don't know, it, I'm, like the root of the set was about that effectively. Yeah. Like, well, how do we, where do, where do we get to a point, I do a bit about kind of the 1980s, people thought they could change things, yeah. right? They were kind of politically engaged and then at some point we just kind of gave up and embraced capitalism. Yeah. But that's kind of, it's, it's stuck the meaning everything there is no non-capitalist space mm. i suppose although in theory the show should be like but they even so you got pass around the bucket at the end well exactly that's quite close the entire argument the free fringe becomes quite interesting because it is technically a non-capitalist space and there is a sort of a communal not communist but communalist sort of organization to it mm -hmm. where it's like everyone sort of chips in i, I, I 
it is free and there's no barrier of entry for anyone in it in terms of performing but also in terms of an audience so that yeah. all sort of is, is true but, but, but so joking, you still have to at the end of the day pass the bucket around pass the bucket around and, and even flyers. that last one minute your comedy is skewed because you have to try and get money out of it yeah you know oh, whereas I mean it's kind of weird to sort of go to have any sort of agenda and say right give me some money now you know, how, yeah. how do you have, unless you just don't say it at all? We well, can't, it's interesting, isn't it? it's like a, it's almost like a conceptual problem, I think. Mm. So you, you ask for the money at the end of the show, and what you're basically saying is, we, we're, we're returning to reality now. Yeah. So the, you know, the, the cap to this treadmill that we knew before is, is now before us again. Yeah. Whereas we could invert it and go, well, that, that was reality. Us sharing a moment, performing, yeah. having a thing, the laughing. That was real. Yeah. And now we're going back to this. to the dream yeah. or nightmare, depending. Which on is it? Which way around is it? Are we? Is this reality in which there's hell and then we we dream for an hour, or is the is the are we living in a dream and for an hour we live in a reality of, of some shitty room in a in a pub somewhere? Yeah. It's, I'm inclined to view the shitty room as the reality. You know, yeah. in as much as it feels more liberated, it feels more alive. I think. I'm not a man who enjoys life. <laughs> that's that's the truth of matters. I find I find life fundamentally disappointing. Yeah. And like much of it is, is wonderful, but I kind of I don't know, the success of capitalism I think is like a failure of imagination. Yeah. So for that hour, well not just comedy, any art form, we, we are able to imagine something to suspend other. That failure. Yeah. But the irony is we can't you know, like that's a slab of Zizek, the pretensions coming in yeah. and quoting Zizek. But he's got to see, so you know, we go to the cinema and we watch like zombie films, we can imagine a post apocalyptic environment with no human beings in whatsoever, but we can't imagine a world about capitalism. Yeah. So it's a basic kind of failure of imagination, I think. Although I don't want to get prescriptive, I don't think all comedy should be about that. Yeah. Well, all, all, be nice all comedy, if more of it was. All comedy is about that, just not through content, just through its mm. form. You know, it is about that sort of. Yeah, I, I have a theory about observational comedy. Though. Yeah, which, uh, which is like, some observation. Don't get me wrong. Some observational comedy is, is brilliant. I'm not. I'm not ruling it out outright. But the nature of observational comedy is to say to the audience, we are the same, right? It's a celebration of sameness. And in that sense, I think the form is inherently conservative. It's not a celebration of difference. So it's nice to go, oh, yeah, I do it. yeah, I've got a draw like that as well. But it doesn't change anything. It doesn't make anyone think differently, I think. That's interesting. That's a very interesting idea, yeah. So I like, so do you think observational comedy is necessarily um, unimaginative, perhaps, or, or, or unemancipatory? Uh, or unemancipatory would be better. Yeah, you I'm know, because sure it's, it's entertaining. I'm not saying it's not funny, yeah. but it seems to me it's got no, it's, it's got no point beyond just going, well, we we are the same. Yeah. You know, and also it's, it's a kind of weird distinction. Like if you're doing, I, I do like a whole bit, almost kind of five ten minutes on capitalism and economics, right? But that sometimes that's very difficult with the audiences because they hear that and go, it's satire yeah. or whatever. Whereas actually that's it's observational comedy as well. Is that I've observed that we live in a capitalist society. Yeah. But that's I don't know. Like some observations are too big. Sorry, this is a beautiful shot there of a man. Billy Maguire. Trundling off to his gig. Is that, um, is that a comic? That's a guy in the white shirt. Oh Christ! Yeah. <laughs> this is a drunk man coming after you. Sorry. Sometimes you have to you have to go for the shot when you, even when you're saying the most interesting people idea. Yeah. No, no, it's not that stuff. Um, no, but that's very interesting. You know, I uh, yeah, no, it's good. I mean, just I think just getting on there and getting on stage, and trying to say it is at least enough to, to, to keep away the demons for yourself, if not. You know, you may, you may not change the world straight away, but I mean, at least, at least you're trying something. Yeah. Well, see, I don't know, how have you been finding... It seems to be like your set is a, you know, you're kind of deconstructing the form to some extent. Yeah, I so I'm wondering, I like, how sympathetic of audience has been to that? 
It's really interesting. Like, at one point in the festival, I had them. I, I, I had a really good thing. I, I've had, I'd never really actually died. The first few ones, people were questioning whether or not I had any control over that sort of anarchy. And they uh -huh. seemed to find some sort of joy in the fact that they were ruining my gig. I was like, no, I, I want you, to, I mean, I've asked you to heckle me. There's this, like, I've, I've allowed these sort of change and these barriers anyway. I, I've kind of, I've written in this atmosphere and environment. So you can't really do anything to fuck me up. Because it's, yeah. it's going to be interesting in the documentary, it's going to be uh, a questioning of my, I mean, I, I want people to question me. I'd be going on stage dressed as a clown and no one seemed to question the idea that that would change the world. <laughs> people seem to be very happy with the idea. Like, yeah, yeah, of course he has. How could he not? <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, yeah, I, even though I'm setting myself up to, to fail, I can't, I'm safe. You know, yeah. which was really fascinating. But then, and then uh, one day, it went really well, and, and people really got the. People don't tend to get on board with the head thing unless I've had enough time to stop them up, get them round to the idea. And I, I've talked too directly about why I'm doing it. I think people become too aware of, uh -huh. of, of the case of like losing themselves to the frenzy. But there's one gig in, in particular where it worked, and I had people shouting at me to dance, and then <laughs> to get naked, and then they saw me getting naked. <laughs> Before one of the, and then before I, I picked up on someone again, as it, as it happens every night, someone will speak out of turn. Though sometimes it's me sort of forcing it a little bit more now. Mm -hmm. um, but when it works more organically, someone will speak out of turn. I'll pretend to be offended, and then I can sort of use that space of science to insert reality and meaning again to be like, this is still a man on stage, even though you know, you know there's lots going on. It's the actual, it's not, yeah. it's still real. It's still, you know. Uh, yeah, but it's interesting, it's interesting. I, 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 I don't think I'll know really what I've done until I look back at it all. And yeah. Value it and edit. Find the narrative that makes me the victim. Find the narrative at the end <laughs> that, that says that I've done right, or else that I've failed and I've, I've essentially wasted a month, one of the most important months but, of my life. I think you are the victim, isn't it? It's, it's the, you know, in the sadomasochistic relationship, it's the masochist rather than the sadist that has the real power, because the masochist gets to say, hit me, hit me again. Yeah. Which is exactly what you're doing at the end of that. It's kind set. of like a sexy Gandhi. You're like a sexy Gandhi. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's been lovely talking to you, man. I've got, and to, I've got to run after another gig, the last gig of the festival. Any advice for what I should do or change? Uh, no, just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Until you get bored of it. Yeah. Seems like a good system I think, to yeah, me. I'm, I'm not getting bored of it, at least. That's the main yeah. thing, I think. Anyway, yeah, very nice to have you Indeed. on the show. Thank on you the show? Me. On a documentary. Uh, see you soon, I guess. See you soon.